the decree and saying it shall be established. He stood upon the word and said there was no, there will not be any due until I counter it. There was no due until he came up and countered it. Praise the living Jesus. I want you to join me this morning as you open your mouth and begin to confess this word. As you go out in the morning, as you go out, learn to say positive things concerning you, concerning your children. When you are going for a business, what do you say? When concerning your marriage, concerning your home, concerning your background, Jabez became more honorable. Not just because he prayed, but because he decreed a thing. And when he decreed it, when he asked God for a change, he got them. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Say with me this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For your goodness. For your goodness. And, kindness. and kindness. Thank you. Thank you. For your mercy. For your mercy. And, grace and grace. Upon my life. Upon my life. And family. And family. Lord, Lord. Your presence. Your presence. Distinguishes me. For progress. for progress, your presence, presence. distinguishes me for progress. for progress. In you, In you. I, live, I live, move, move. I, have I have my being. The grace of God, grace of God. Continually, continually speaks for me, speaks for me. Before, before great men for promotion. For promotion. I, enjoy I enjoy turning point in my finance, career, and relationship. My life, my life is full, is full of, the glory of the glory of God, of God. and I am I a, success a success before the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the beauty, is the beauty of, my of my life. I have I the Spirit, the Spirit of, wisdom of wisdom and revelation, revelation in, the in the knowledge of the Father. Of the Father. Therefore, in righteousness and dominion. I have insight. I have insight into the secrets. I have insight into the secrets and mysteries of God. For me, in the mighty name of Jesus, this is my season. This is my season of turning point. Praise the living Jesus.
Let that power be bowed now. Let that power be bowed now. I lose you from their influences. From today, you become insensitive to demonic oppressions. I say you become insensitive to their attacks. You become insensitive to demonic emotions. In the name of Jesus. Rest your feet. Go back to your seat. There's somebody here. I don't know. I saw that person waving the hand. Somebody here. Help me, Holy Spirit. Madam, come. You. Yes. Yes. Come. 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 No. 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 The mom at the back. Come. Quickly. Quickly. Come. Somebody shout prophesy. prophesy. Somebody shout prophesy. prophesy. Say, Lord, talk to me. Lord, Open your hand, mama. Open your hand. Open your hand. Your children will not bring shame to you. Amen. And number two, they here. She didn't come today. Madam, bring any of them to me on Sunday. Next week. Open your hand. Open, put them together. Put them together. Your children will not bring shame to you. Amen. I decree this. I declare this. Is any of them out of the country? Any of them? Any one of them out of the country? Put your hand together. Put your hand together, madam. Put your hand together. Eh? Say what? Did not go up to today. But at that time, it don't say it didn't go up to today because the devil don't want the, the person to go. Listen, guys, when there's a prophecy, God has spoken. It does not mean it's a lie. It means that the devil has succeeded in hindering it. I am saying most times when God speaks, it's not because it is not going to happen, it's because you are not doing what is supposed to be done to make it a reality. Open your hand, mama. Your, they will not bring shame to you. Amen. That one that is supposed to travel out, where is he? He's in Gawalada. Guagua, but it's Nabuja here. Hear me, Mama. That's, that's why I'm asking you if there's any child in the, the abroad. Because I saw that child already in the spirit in the US. Amen. You know what I'm saying? But I'm seeing that the devil has succeeded in hindering him. Time start number. Abby, give me the all. I pray for you. Many prophets, did you hear what he said? He said, Many prophets have said it that the child will travel, but the child has not traveled in the spirit, he has already traveled. But in the physical, there's a hindrance. I prophesy today, wherever that child is, Father, let his destination in the spirit match up with his physical reality. Let his destination in the spirit, his prophetic destination. Let it match up with his physical reality from today. As I speak these words, like the words of Elisha, possessed for leprous men, that they became instruments in the hand of the Almighty to bring deliverance to Israel. So I decree by this declaration, let there be materials and machineries that will make a reality of this declaration in the name of Jesus. Madam, when God speaks to you, God is not a liar. He is not a liar. It's because the devil knows that that boy should travel abroad. A lot of things will change. In fact, as he's entering the country, his helpers will begin to identify with him. I pray for all of you here. Anywhere you ought to be, that your helpers are waiting for you. But the devil has succeeded in keeping you from seeing them. As you shout, Amen. Let that demonic oppression scatter in the name of Jesus. So I pray for the anointing. As you live here, God go with you and walk with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Go back to your seat. My daughter, come. You that was coming out before, come. Yes, come. He's brooding over every darkness. He's causing light. As I put this money in your hand, I declare and declare, your hands will never run dry financially. In the name of Jesus, every yoke of dryness in your life, I curse it in the name of Jesus. As you start here, man, I declare by your life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I lose this woman now. Let your hands carry money. Carry money, carry money. Carry money. Carry money. Carry money. Jesus. 
Hast. Set your free, set your free. Out. Bring on, bring on, bring on, bring on. Talk to me. But God has to pray for you because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it said, There shall hang upon him the glory of his father's house. There will hang this boy here. What's your name? Your name is my God, my God, my God. I'm seeing the angels that walk with my father. I'm seeing that angel hanging on you, the glory of your father's house. And God is saying, the shame that your father has experienced all through this year, you are the one that will wipe it away. Amen. The one of people in this house, can you say an amen louder? Amen. As I put this oil on your life, I declare, I declare that the hand of God go with you. Amen. The shame of your father's house, by the blood of Jesus, I eradicate it now. Amen. I eradicate it now. Amen. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet. My brother, be careful of women. Be careful. Women matter. Be careful. I am saying, be careful with women matter. When women start throwing themselves on you, remember, don't eat your tomorrow today. Don't eat your tomorrow today. There are some people, they get a rope with some things because they are is like a corn that you can plant today and eat the tomorrow. But as a destiny is like cocoa plants, it may take time to rise, but you must understand that the fruit of a cocoa plantation is forever. So you need to understand that your destiny is not like this brother's own. Some people they see that they do wrong things, they get away with it, they must go about them. But there are some people because your family have been through a lot of disgrace and shame. 
and for you to bring them out, it will take the strong arm. It's no hand, no hand. Yes, there is finger of God, yes, there is arm of God, yes, and there's the hand of God. Yes, now, the finger, you can't compare what it does to the hand. Yes, what the hand does, can't compare to what the arm does. Then there's the outstretched arm of God. And this, that's, what the, that's what is coming to work in your life, the outstretched arm of God. And for that to be provoked, you need levels of sacrifice on your person. Because a lot of destinies are hanging on you. David, are you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. When you see women, love them. If you want to marry, go and marry on time. But please don't allow yourself to be plain up and down. Away match is what takes people's destiny away from them. You know what I'm saying? Away match. They call it away match. It takes people's destiny away from them. I secure you the hand of God. Amen. I cover you by the blood. Amen. The enemy will not see you. Amen. I hide you under the covering of the Almighty. Amen. You shall free destiny Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Help me give the Holy Spirit a big, big, big hand this morning. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hey. You are brooding over oh
desire to lift you, I release them to you. In the name of Jesus, day by day help us, I release them to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I promote you in the realm of the Spirit. I promote you in the Spirit. What kills others will not kill you. What ties others down will not tie you down. What destroys others will not destroy you. What makes people poor will not make you poor. What makes men stranded in life, I drive it far from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. As I saw, something, I saw the favor of God upon you. You know, there are some people that you just see them, you just see the love of God, not because of who they are, but because of what they represent. So I see the favor of God upon you. Are you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm seeing that very soon, it's going to be like an attraction. People will just take a liking to you, just like you. They want to do things with you. Are you know what I'm saying? They want to, they want to trust you. You know that people you see them, you just see them, you don't know them, you don't know them, just see them, take this one, don't trust them, you can't trust them. But that people you see, even not knowing them, you can trust them with your life. Come on, talk to me. Yeah. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. I just want to take you higher and lift you up in life. Yeah. Give the Holy Spirit a big, big Give a test. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the Holy Spirit one more time? Celebrate the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Celebrate the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Please, you may be seated. Amen. There's a song that we did. Hold on. Amen. You all know that I am a grateful person and I love, love God. There's a song that we did on uh, when we did that song again? On Friday. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you. Lord, this is my comfort to the Lord. Lord, I will worship you, Kevin. You don't know the song. In the earth has been what you know. The very simple song now. It says, Lord, I will bow to you, to no other God but you alone. Then the next answer says, Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands as need but you alone. Amen. It's a song of, of confession and surrender to the Lord. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you alone. Oh, Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands me. But you will love what you alone. One more time. Lord, I will bow, Lord. I will bow to you. To no other God. But you alone. Lord, I will worship you. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands has me. But you alone. I want to sing together one more time. Lord, I will bow to you, Lord. I will bow to you. To no other God. But you alone. Lord, I will bow, worship you, Lord. I will bow. Nothing hands us back. But you alone. Now this is the chorus. Now this is the chorus.
are too small to limit your goodness. Our experiences are too small to qualify your goodness. You are a good God and you are a faithful God. And today we, we vow that we will not bow before any other God. Help us to dethrone every, every throne we have created in our heart to take your place. Money, job, family. Whatever is a throne in our heart, help us to get rid of them, oh God. So that you alone will come first in our lives. And every other thing will come second. Thank you for helping us, oh Lord. Jesus, mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. 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 You see, the most difficult thing to do, most times, is not just to become a born again believer. The most difficult thing to do is to dethrone the things in your heart. You see, an average person standing, there are many thrones in his heart. Many thrones. Some of them is their children. They don't, they, God doesn't come here, their children. They say, I mean, leave God out of God out of this one. That might begin with this. Oh, who gave you the child in the first place? No, who gave you the child in the first place? Then some is business. Some, some ladies, is their bag. Some ladies can spend hundreds of thousands to buy a cushy bag. But when they are giving offering in church, there is a sensor on their fingertip. They can sensor 20 naira. They can sensor in their pocket. Too. I mean, the, the sensor is in their hand. In their pocket, they can sensor 1,000. No, 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 no. Okay, 20 naira. I have 20 naira. You, know, you see, they are dancing. The day you are able to dethrone self from your heart, you will see the power of God who you have never seen before in your life. That's the challenge most times. The degree of God's presence in your life is the degree of the death that has taken place in your life. A man that is alive cannot carry God in his totality. It takes a dead man to carry God. Come on. Come on. Jesus said, except a corn of wheat falls and dies, it abides alone. This one of us hold on to money as if the... You know what just helps me? I ask myself, if God says give something, I tell myself, what if I didn't get it in the first place? What if you're not alive in the first place? No, what if you didn't have the money in the first place? What if you don't have the house in the first place? So all of you are looking at me this morning. There is a self that needs to die for God to be enthroned in your life. And let me see you guys. The day you die to self and God comes alive, you will see that all those things you are pursuing, they will start coming after you. Yeah. So the, the, most, the most important deliverance that can ever take place in your life, it is not deliverance from demonic powers. It is deliverance from self. I beseech the brethren, Romans 12, 1, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. He said, this is your reasonable service. And be it transformed. And do not conform to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. The devil is not afraid that you're a Christian. The devil is not afraid that you go to church. The devil is not afraid when you pray for three hours. No, 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 no. Don't be deceived. Have you forgotten that the devil was made in God's presence? Come on. No, I've forgotten that Job, on his matter, the devil went to God one on one. You are here praying for God's presence now. I mean, the devil went to God one on one. See, we see, 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 God, see, devil. There was no shaking, no falling down. What the devil dreads when you come to church is what church does in your heart. That's right. 
What he fears is what happened in your heart when you pray. What the devil fears is what happens in your heart when you read the word of God. Because he knows that the moment your heart is, is transformed, his systems can no longer operate in your life. The devil has a system. And that system can only operate in the heart of those who are controlled by carnal system. Carnality is not just in your fornicating. No, no, no. Carnality is that your mind is still sensual. You are still being controlled by what you see and what you feel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I pray that God will cause us to be delivered from self. Amen. We began the teaching talking about payday. This month is our month turning point. I believe that you will experience a turning point in your life. Amen. Amen. Then before yesterday, somebody called me and said, Pastor, you are a man of God. You are a man. I said, before I call. He said, you prophesied for a job. Right now, I'm working and my salary is 450,000 naira. A sister who has worked, who has graduated 10 years, no job. God is about to pay somebody here. Amen. The years that you have been at home doing nothing, God is about to reward you for it. So this morning, quickly, next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about provoking divine intervention. Provoking divine intervention. Someone say divine intervention. Divine say it again. Say divine intervention. divine intervention. Don't forget, we are still on payday. Today is season three. We did season one two weeks ago. Last week we did season two. Today is season three. Praise the Lord. Now, please, all the men in the house, all the women, single brothers and sisters, don't forget, our annual Thanksgiving is coming up on the 13th of December. Please make sure you wait behind for a brief meeting with the leaders of each um, committee. Lord bless you. Provoking divine intervention. Divine intervention is needed because the Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. I used to hear what my brothers and sisters Though we walk in the flesh, though our operations is in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, not through your blessing, not through your skill, not through your holiness. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of demonic strongholds. So divine intervention is important because we are we are in the world. So we need divine intervention on a regular basis to prove to the world that we serve the Lord. Oh come on, I see your guys. Nobody will have regard for your Christianity if they don't notice divine intervention in your life. The only reason why people will have regard for you is that people have said this job is impossible to get. But as you appear, the job became yours. They say, no, 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 this guy has something with you. No, 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 this is not normal. I've heard it before. They say, oh boy, God, they're upside though. Have you heard it before? Yeah. That's what they call divine. If all you do is just wake up in the morning, you go out, your life is normal. Normal money, normal job, normal children, normal car, normal house. Then you are not worthy to be called a Christian. Christianity is the demonstration of divine intervention. Paul said, I've not come to you with the enticing words of men's wisdom, but by the demonstration, by the operation of divinity. So as a child of God, you must crave for divine intervention. You must do everything for men to see that the hand of God is at work in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is better for a Christian not to be alive than to be alive without divine intervention. So this morning, I will share with you in the next few minutes how to provoke divine intervention. Turn to your neighbor, say divine intervention. Divine. 
Tap your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. Get ready. Get ready. For divine intervention. For divine intervention. Maybe that one looking like a tailor. Look at somebody and say neighbor. Neighbor. Get ready. For divine intervention. Who does look like uh, like a lawyer? Turn somebody and say neighbor. Neighbor. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. It's about to hit your line. Number one on the list is gratitude. Someone say gratitude. Say again, say gratitude. Gratitude is one of the major catalysts to divine intervention. Now I said this when I was when, when we were worshiping the Lord. I said gratitude is not praises, dancing praises, or singing worship. They are one of the expressions of gratitude. When a man loves his wife, it is easy for him to sing to the wife. Baby, baby, baby. Now, that singing, it is as a result of what is in the heart. Oh, come on, talk to me again. Oh, yes. So, when a man loves God, when he's praising God, he's not just singing songs, he's expressing something in the heart. That's right. That's why when I see people and worship God, when it's time to worship, I, 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 it is obvious. Those people are not grateful to God. No, 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 no. It, they, you can't fake it. What you have, you can't give it. But a grateful man will always experience divine intervention. Let the earth praise thee. Let all the earth praise thee. Psalm 67, verse 3, verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, verse 7. He said, Let the earth praise thee. Then shall the earth. Yield an increase. Psalm 67, verse 5, 7. Let's just read this. Let's read Psalm 67. Please look at it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Somebody said, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say the again, say, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, I love you, Holy Spirit. Say, You are the best, Holy Spirit. Say, Mwah, Holy Spirit. Come on, say, Mwah, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Only those who, who, who know him can do that. Amen. God be merciful unto us. Verse 1. Psalm 6, Psalm verse 1. And bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us. Allah, that that way may be not upon the earth. Thy saving grace upon nations. Verse 3. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Verse 4. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou hast judged the people righteously and governed the nation upon the earth. Sila. Verse 5. I want to read it now. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then. And our God. Even. Jesus. Hold on. When you see in scripture, then, that then will always be, it is always a, a, a product of what happened before. Yes, sir. Praise, praise, but then there is a result. Gratitude will always provoke divine intervention. I feel amazed the way people show ingratitude when in the face of the person who helped them, especially sisters. Sometimes you do something for a sister, she feels it is her right as a lady, her gender to have it. No, that somebody gave you 2,000, you don't say, Abba, only 2,000. You are made to give 20,000. That is almost women, ladies especially, they remain single. The level of ingratitude is alarming. You give somebody 1,000, you just collect it. <laughs> are you okay? Not even thank you. Thank you. You see, that's what thank you. It is one of the key when you when you when you when you release it, it ignites somebody. The person who said thank you to me not say anything, but you have done something to him. You see a brother, somebody helped you got a job or helped you to do something. No thank you from the mouth. Just collect it and just say, Well, 
Now be your maid, you build house of person. What do you do? Only house rent. Nobody else has to pay. You pay house rent. Hey, I want to kill you for now. I'm not going to rest again. You be God. That is why hardship is the portion and the address of so many Christians because of ingratitude. A married man, your wife helps you to wash your clothes. Or your wife cooks your food for you. You come back, you eat the food. You do the food like this. Honey, you eat too much salt inside this food. Why not go and cook your own? I say it every time I eat. I come back in the night from work. Honey, this is your food. As I think it's in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. This is your food. I just saw it in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 5. Very powerful food. What you don't show gratitude for dies naturally. Yeah. There are many people their home is dying every day because they're not grateful. They open which can house this one? Which can house this one? God take back. I don't have this our household. And God said, no, you will remain there until you learn to show gratitude. Do you know, brothers and sisters, I begin to round up this morning? Do you know that even God is grateful? Even God shows gratitude, Robert. Do you know it was gratitude that made God deal with Miriam, Moses' sister? God said, Ah, uh -uh, you are not afraid to speak to Moses, the humblest man in the whole world. Are you not afraid? God knows that there are many, there are very few people who can do what Moses did. That was why he showed gratitude to, to Moses by dealing with his oppositions. God knows that very few people are grateful. So when God sees a grateful man, that man is a dangerous man. Who don't cross his path. Because the one who is grateful will come after you. Come on! Come on! That is why Thanksgiving at the end of the year is not an option for us. If you are here in this house, don't tell me I don't have money. That is a statement of ingratitude. That's the person who told you I don't have money. He's planning to buy the judge card of one and send to somebody. Thanksgiving is on the 13th. If you start saving now, you will make it. If you are in the single department, men's department, or uh, women, but start saving now. Father, I make a vow showing gratitude to you. I'm giving a hundred thousand for Thanksgiving. If God sees it in your heart first, it will be in your hand. God said to Miriam, He said, When there's a prophet in your midst, I speak to him in dreams and in visions. It's about Moses. Exodus uh, Numbers 12, 1. It's about Moses is not like that, for he is the most humble man in the whole earth. For God to say a man is the meekest man in the whole world, you all know that God knows everything. That's right. Oh, come on, touch me now. Yes. So God has discovered that in this man called Moses was humility. And he didn't find it anywhere. And God now see. God held on to him. Number 12. Held on to him. Then somebody called Miriam because he used to hear the voice of God too. Now started opposing him. It is gratitude from God that makes him judge your enemies. Because God knows that you can go and serve your enemies. But you choose not to serve your enemies. You choose to serve him. That is why I keep judging your enemies. It is gratitude from God. I yes, sir. I yes, sir. So when when your God is grateful, where do you get your own gratitude from? Where do you get it from? Where, 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 where do you get it from? Where do you get it from? Ask your neighbor. Say neighbor. Where, where do you get in gratitude? Where, where you get say neighbor. neighbor. Your God is a grateful God. Where, where you see your own? Your friend dashed you money. You say, Abba, he's not my friend. What are friends for? Oh, really? What are friends for? No problem. You see me here? Every week I type message. I said to my pastor, Sir, thank you. Because he could have sent me to go uh, to Ogomo uh, uh, shop or Ibadan. No? Oh, yeah. 
Don't take for granted. Anybody who gave you access, don't take the person for granted. Yes, don't. Yes, Even though the person is your husband or your, or your wife. Amen? Amen? Even though the person is your husband. Do you know it was gratitude that made God to make Abraham the father of faith today? Because in the whole world, God has searched for a man that he could use to give birth to the Hebrew people. God didn't find anybody. He never found Abraham. Abraham said, anything you want to do, I'll do. God said, really? You will do? God said, because of that, I will bless you. When God is blessing a man, it's not just because of the blessing. God is showing that I am grateful for your sacrifice. Yes. Let me shock you this morning. Do you know it is gratitude expressed when a man begins to win souls? Oh, yes, it is. Father, you have saved me. I am grateful to you. I want to win somebody else to me. Has somebody get what I'm saying this morning? Yes, sir. Evangelism becomes an easy task when you are grateful to God. In Mark the 5, verse 20, Mark 5, 20, there was a madman of Gadara. You remember the story? The man of Gadara? This man, the Bible says that Jesus saved him and casted out those demons from his body. In gratitude to God, the Bible says that this man entered the city, honor him, preached to the whole Decapolis to the saved. It is ingratitude when you sit beside somebody who is not born again and you are not bothered about it. When you are grateful to God, you will mark December 13th as your time of thanksgiving. God said, you will appear before me three times in a year. And said, when you appear, don't appear empty. It is not the absence of money. It is the absence of gratitude. That's the most good. The year keep getting worse and worse because they're never grateful for the one God have done for them before. If you think God is not detailed in Thanksgiving, how come God was expecting the nine lepers? Only one came to say thank you. He said, Where are the nine? Where are they? Where are the nine? Ingratitude. It is it is becoming norm now in the church. Do you know it's ingratitude for you to disregard somebody who is praying for you? You see your pastor coming, just walk past him. <laughs> you are not honoring him, you are honoring the grace that he carries. I don't see my pastor come and I say, Pastor. <laughs> That love it just went there. <laughs> By the day, people are becoming godless, godless, not fearing principles, having no regard for principles. It is gratitude to life to honor somebody who is older than you. Good morning, sir. Some people, even though it is not from the heart, so but that that physical demonstration is just something. Because of course, as they are saying, good morning, sir, you are idiot. <laughs> Somebody shout gratitude. gratitude. Say it again, say gratitude. gratitude. Say it again, say gratitude. gratitude. God shows gratitude to people. He shows gratitude. No matter of the 12, I've said that with you. God shows gratitude. He tells people. So every time you are saying, Father, I thank you. This Thanksgiving, I will, I will do my best. We are saying we are looking for 8 million, 10 million to fix the new place. So I can move in there and have a proper church. It is nothing we talk for most of us here. We can go the extra much to make it happen. But we are not grateful enough. The level of our gratitude is not enough to go that extra mile. I see God blessing somebody here. Amen. I see God lifting somebody here. Amen. Do you know it is also a, an expression of gratitude to partner with God? Partnership with God is a sign of gratitude. If you can read with me, Luke chapter 8, verse 2. All right, read, 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 read the scripture. Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Look at this scripture. When I saw it this morning, the Holy Spirit was just blowing my mind. But I was like, what? 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 Really? 
Luke chapter 8. Are you there? Look at verse 2. Are you there? Look at verse 2. Look at what the Bible says. There was some certain women, the Bible says, certain women, and certain women which had been healed. Somebody come on out. Come on, I see here. They have been what? Come on, look at it. Luke 8, 2. I want to be sure you are there. Are you there? Yes. Come on, are you there? Have you seen it? Now, let's read. One, two, read. And certain women which have been healed of evil spirits. Uh-huh. And infirmities. Uh-huh. 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 Out of whom? How many devils? Seven. Verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Susa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their after they have been helped, Christ has preached to them. They said, No, I can't continue like this. I want to show gratitude to God. I will minister of my substance. I will give of my money to partner with this gospel to make sure it spreads. Do you know the more money we have, the more we can buy more equipment, more things in the house of God? I called the brother one time. I said, we need to buy a laptop quickly. We need to do something. He said, but what can I do? No, but you see, God will not ask you for what he has not given you. Hello? Yeah. God won't ask you if he has not given you what he's asking you. As they receive the ministry from Jesus, sometimes some people in church, they have been in that church, God has helped them to a particular level. But you will never see them release the same level of gratitude to the system. The only thing you see, you see a new car. You see their face is changing. You know when money starts coming, you can't hide it. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Hello? When money starts coming, you can't hide it. Even though there are some very, very serious, hypothetic, aradictic brethren. That even though 10 million you have, you will see it. <laughs> hey, Jesus. I was entering the bank in Lagos once, some years, some years ago. And this brother entered the bank. Before he entered, I was behind him. You know, in the bank, you queue behind him. Before he entered, he looked like this. He looked like he was looking at brown envelope. If you see that brother, where is he looking at that? I will be sorry for him. Elderly. He looked like this. He looked like this. He entered the bank. I said, What is my. I entered the bank. As I entered, as the manager said him, the manager said him to go and call him. Because that man's account is sweating. <laughs> but yet, Looking at that. But you know, there's a way money with that money, somebody who didn't work for you will spend it. That's why people see them. You, you can't, the money cannot hide in there. Like me now, if I have money, the only the first thing you will see is that new things that happen in the church. You will know you can, I can hide the money. Amen? Amen. Then when, when there's money, they say, I talk to my wife when there's money. I said, Honey, how much that you say? How much is it? That's it. It's only all oh, the money is as if, excuse me, I'm telling you how much to <laughs> Money can hide though. Money is not evil. Money only amplifies the person in whose hand the money is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if a man is a wicked man, if he has more money, that money ah, becomes wicked. Ah, yeah. If a man loves God, how do you know? You will see that the church where he attends. There are things in the church. That's they right. can tell you, I secretly bought this one million shares. I bought it myself. See this window? This ark. I did it 500,000. I love my book, but they do the talk people with it. One, no, no. I did this window myself. <laughs> no, I did this. Nobody contributed for me. But when that same person loves the things of the world, you will see the things of his world and the world around him because he loves money. Gratitude. Money becomes a vehicle by which you express your gratitude to God. Lord, you have been too good to me. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is your name. <laughs> Excellent is your power. Lord, you are wonderful, my God. You are 
Excellentis Yolé. Excellentis Yolé. Oh, Excellentis Power. My Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. So, gratitude is what provokes divine intervention. And I've told you, gratitude can be expressed through partnership. You say, Lord, you have been faithful to me from today. Every week, I want to engage in what you call the partnership booster. Every week, if it is 1,000, 2,000, every week, every Sunday, I will put it for the work of the ministry. That is some money you carry your friends to go to shop right and go and blow. You can use it to provoke divine intervention for more blessings in your life. Every week, make up your mind and tell yourself, Father, I will do this every Every time God tells me, empty your account. I, I don't do it grudgingly, even though sometimes it can be painful. But I do it because I'm grateful to God for supplying it in the first place. Do you know that having a seed to sow is an act of God's mercy? Having a seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. God looks at you and says, you need a seed to come out of this situation. He put the seed in your hand. But some person has to get the seed, they say, no problem, we'll collect my money, then we'll not collect my money. Then you see the person, he remains in his situation one year after. <laughs> I pray that God will give you the grace Amen. To, to always show gratitude that will lift you to the next level. Amen. Who says a big amen to that? Amen. Who says a big amen to that? Amen. Do you also know that it is gratitude that you don't want to miss any church, any church service? Do you know that? It is an expression of gratitude to say, Father, I will not miss any church because I'm grateful to you for giving me a life. So this life, every Sunday, I am in church. Every Friday, I am in church. Because you are showing gratitude to God. David said, I was glad when they say, let us go. Not to life club. Not to gossip. Some people, they prefer the house of gossip than the house of God. They carry their phone. Or their friend calls them. You get it? Come, come, cheese, stay, cheese, stay. Then you see all their free begin to start. They want to go and hear cheese. All their ear begin to start like this. Like they will call Uber. Uber, where are you, Uber? There is cheese in the heart of Evia. Let me go and meet Evia about cheese. But the same person come to church and say, Actually, I woke up this morning. I was tired. I was tired. You are not, you're not a good person. You are doing great. And you see, when God sees that in the midst of your hectic week, you still need out time to come to church, God shows you gratitude by blessing you. He tells you that you still came to church today. Let that door open for you tomorrow. Amen. Let that man bless you. Amen. Listen, guys. Most times, it is not your prayer and fasting that brings the miracle. Don't be deceived. It is your gratitude that brings it. As we close this morning, let the grace for gratitude rest upon you afresh. Amen. Let the grace for gratitude rest upon you afresh. Amen. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet as we close. Say, Father, I remain grateful to you. Amen. Say, say, Lord, I remain grateful to you. Lord, I remain grateful to you. Lord, I remain grateful to you. Come on, wave your hands. Say, Father, I remain grateful to you. Wave those hands. Yes, wave them. Wave. There's so many here. Wave your hands, please. Say, Father, I remain grateful to you. Wave those hands. Say, Father, I remain grateful to you. Say, I will always be grateful to you. In the name of Jesus. I will always be grateful to you. In the name of Jesus. I will always be grateful to you. Those in the overflow with your hands, say, I will be grateful to you. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. As we close this morning, if you are here this morning, you want to show gratitude to God for giving you life. And you want to give that life back to Him. The Bible says, He that has the Son has life, and He that has not the Son has no life. If you are here this morning, hear me very carefully. And you are not born again. You want to say, Father, I want to show you gratitude. I want to give a life to Christ. Please put your hand up anywhere you are. 
God bless you. God bless you. You want to, you want to God bless you. Come on, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. Put it up. Can we give the Lord a big man? God bless you. I know the Holy Year one also wants to do it. You put your hand up and you want. Don't let your friend deceive you. Giving your life to Christ is the best decision you can ever make in your life. Please put your hand up for her, please. Who else is joining her? Who else is joining her? Who else is joining her, please? Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Who else is joining her? I know there's somebody here that wants to give her life or his life to Christ. And the devil is telling you, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. He's making you shy. Thank you, Father. Put your hand on my daughter, put your hand on. Anybody joining her this morning? Put the devil to shame. There's somebody here. Please help me. Clap your hands at me. Let's encourage somebody here to be born again, to be born again. Somebody here. You are, you are contemplating. Do I do it my way? Do so I postpone? But I know that God has a plan for you. I pray Satan's hand over your mind and decision. In the name of Jesus. You are watching us online. I want to pray for you right now to be born again. God bless. Come on, sir. Come, come, come forward. Who has to do that? Who has to do that? Come in. Come, come, come. You are watching us online. You want to do that? Quickly stand here. Stand here. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So this prayer, we say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe that you died and you rose again to set me free. I make up my mind and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to do the Lord to pick up for this soul and the saved. Amen. There is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this soul that is saved today. We don't take it for granted. No man comes to the Father except the Son draws him. Father, you are the one that drew this one here, and we recognize that. And we ascribe all the grace and the glory to you. Thank you for this soul that is saved today. Keep out your power. Keep by your grace. Cause her to grow in knowing you. Grow in studying your word. Grow in evangelizing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, my daughter. God bless you. Can we go to bigger for this soul that is saved today? Now come on to that God that is not good. Is that the way you are celebrating this morning, church? Is that the way you are celebrating the whole soul that you are celebrating? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, this is what I'm saying. This is gratitude. So I'm going to say, ah, uh just -uh, this, this one so, just one so. No problem now. No, just one so. You can't clap. Please give him a big hand, job. <laughs> anyway, listen, businessmen, professionals, if you want to rise to the zenith of your career, this thing I talk.